welcome Mr. Madhaba Nanda Acharya as our speaker today and all of the audience. Uh, maybe uh, first of all, because of the change of the schedule, so some participants were unable to attend. Okay, first of all, let's say thanks to Allah who has given us guidance, happiness, healthy, and mercy. So we can attend and participate in this special event without any obstacles. First and salutation upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, let's just uh, begin. And then uh, uh, for the audience who just joined, the CBMA series program is one of the routine webinar programs and it held by the research and development team which, of course, is shaded by the Bima Sabartum group. And this time, Sibima Series is the 24th. Bima Sabartum group is, is a company engaged in consulting mining, construction, environment, and various other business. Uh, before we started, I will read the rules for today's program. Uh, the first one is to the, all of the audience. Please open your camera. The second, when the webinar is ongoing, partic participants are allowed to turn off the microphone. And the last one is, if anyone wants to be asked, uh, you can kindly use raise hand uh, feature and you are allowed to speak by moderators. If the moderator has, in, has not been allowed to speak, then the participant is allowed to turn on the mic microphone. So please, to all of the audience, uh, you can kindly turn on your camera, please. And don't forget to use the background. Uh, we have sent the background on the WhatsApp group. Uh, maybe, Tim, uh, you can reshare the background on the chat column. Okay, uh, I have sent the background. Uh, so, for all of the audience, please turn on your camera. In the end of the event, this event, there will be an accent and the link will be shared in the chat box. Okay, so let's move uh, to the next uh, session. Let me tell you about the rundown for this webinar. The first one is opening. The second is speech from Mr. Haji Eric Ujaya, SMT, as director of Bima Sabatum. The third is my event. It's webinar by our special speaker, Mr. Madhavananda Acharya. The fourth is Q&A session, and we will be closing and documentation in the end. Oh, well. Let's begin this event by reciting Basmalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay. The next agenda is speech that we deliver by Mr. Haji Eric Ujaya SMT as director of Bima Sabatum. To Mr. Haji Eric Ujaya SMT, time is yours. Uh, pardon, sir, you still unmute. Please unmute your... Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah. Good night all, uh, for all attendance. See Bima Series 24 attendance uh, from Bima Sabartum. And this night, I want to say to Mr. Acharya, who become a speaker, a keynote speaker from this event. And then... Thank you also for ladies and gentlemen attendance in Bima Series 24 at this night. And then special thanks also to Ms. Naswa and R&D team from Bima Sabartum. Uh, thank you very much for your if, uh, effort to see Bima Series held uh, at this night. Uh, good. Uh, well, uh, can be will uh, realize it. Okay, uh, as said before, uh, Mrs. Naswa, Bima Sabartum, 
is a uh, mining consulting since 2016 with home base in Palembang City, Indonesia. We always encourage uh, be, uh, well, we we always encourage to sharing session, sharing knowledge, experience to another people, especially in mining industry scope. Uh, so uh, we have a benefit to another people with the sharing session like the Sibima series. So at this time uh, till uh, 24th, uh, 24th, 24 agenda. Okay, uh, we hope uh, with this event uh, from expertise, uh, Mrs. Acharya, we hopefully uh, can sharing his knowledge from another country, maybe from India and then from Australia, can sharing uh, information, knowledge, experience to uh, for us. Yeah, uh, I said before uh, regarding the minor mineral resources is optimization is maybe new in Indonesian mining because uh, mineral resources code uh, estimate uh, uh, will release in 2017. So after that, uh, uh, since five years uh, from. So I think this re, uh, relate for this event and title uh, to uh, attendance. Okay, uh, and then maybe we apologize if the event and something happened like uh, uh, signal, internet, internet connection and other because uh, we spread location come from Palembang, from India, and another attendees, maybe another province in Indonesia. So for, for all, thank you, and happy following this event. Okay, thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Haji Eric SNT, for the speech. Uh, before we started, for all of the audience, I would like to tell you, to all of you who are engaged in mining, you must have to provide the latest home trainer or platform that is Sibisha, which can be accessed through www.sibisha.com. And also, don't forget to check the upcoming event from Bima Sabatu. The training and development event that will be started on 10th August 2022, and there's only seven seats. So don't miss uh, the evening. So let's move on to the next agenda. This is the main event, and this session will be delivered by Mr. Madhavananda Acharya. His current role model is a senior manager in geology and business development with 15 years multi-community experience in mining, resource, and exploration geology. To Mr. Madhavananda Acharya, time is yours. So, a very good uh, evening to all of you uh, in Indonesia, all of my friends, all my colleagues. And uh, so, uh, this is a wonderful event uh, that has been organized by this is, uh, MIMA group. Uh, they're uh, doing very wonderful job, and uh, I was uh, asked to deliver a uh, session on what exactly going on in Indian mining ecosystem and what are the softwares and what are the technology that are being used across mining industries. So um, I have developed a PPT that uh, is based on the evaluation of mineral resources and its optimization. So this PPT that uh, I have prepared uh, for to people who are directly or indirectly involved in mining and mining associated works. So this is specifically for geologists who are into coal geology, iron ore geology, 
or any other base metal commodity or any critical element geology so uh, along with that this is for mining engineers who are doing a strategic mine planning scheduling and optimization so this is a combination of you can say uh, particularly uh, this set of uh, this type of course is most beneficial for geologists mining engineers surveyors uh, also geotechnical engineers because all these are are the main uh, soldiers of uh, mining organizations so let's come to uh, our main agenda uh, today evening uh, this is uh, the topic is evaluation of mineral resources and its optimization so uh, the first slide is uh, uh, we have to uh, come through evaluation of mineral resources next please next so this is uh, in the first slide uh, i have defined the mineral resources definition what does it mean if you see a mineral resources by definition is a concentration or occurrence of solid material of economic interest that is that must be available in the earth crust in such form the grade quality quantity must be evaluated you can evaluate all these things like grade quality and quantity and these are the reasonable prospects for eventual economic extraction it means whatever the material that is side in the earth crust this must satisfy the reasonable prospects for eventual economic extraction it means in near future also there is a possibility that we can extract that resource economically so this is the definite definition of mineral resources that the location quantity grade continuity and all the geological characteristics of a mineral resource are known estimated and interpreted from specific geological evidence and knowledge including sampling so there are some sort of evidence you have to uh, prove that uh, uh, that yes this area is uh, full of natural resources and all so there must be some evidence you have to do a lot of geological study you have to do a lot of geological study for uh, classify mineral resources to establish the mineral resources okay so next to the comes to the next the second uh, stanza there is the classes of mineral resources so the mineral resources is divided into three major categories so the the inferred one which is a very less confident mineral resources second one is the indicated and the measured one is the final or topmost confidence confidence where geologists put their so much confidence on it that is called major mineral resources so uh, the portion of a mineral deposit that do not reasonable prospects for eventual economic extraction must not be included in the mineral resources that means if if any area which is not suitable or which is not uh, satisfy the reasonable prospects for eventual economic extraction that 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 area must not be included in the mineral resources like for example if we say there is a chromite resources which is available 500 meter below the ground and the grade is 10% only it means you cannot mine this resource in future also because the grade is very less so for that uh, you cannot classify it as a resource because it is not going to be economically viable in near future also so that is the most important thing it has to be reasonable prospects for eventual economic extraction okay so next the first part is the definition of inferred mineral resources and inferred mineral resources that part of a mineral resource for which quantity grade and quality are estimated on the basis of limited geological evidence so geologist starts with establishing resources with a very less level of confidence 
and very you can say uh, the sampling has been done in a wide range you can say it's a very wide range or all the geological study has been uh, uh, study all the geological study has been put forward in uh, to satisfy uh, to establish I mean, in pulmonary resources with the less less much of confidence so geological evidence is sufficient to imply but not verify geological and great continuity it is based on exploration sampling testing information gathered through appropriate techniques from locations such as outcrops trenches peaks below so these are the geological process that has involved in the exploration program the second one is the indicated mineral resource. So this is how the level of confidence increased. Start, starting with inferred mineral resource, which is of lesser confidence. Then we went to the indicated mineral resource, which is have a bit higher level of confidence compared to inferred mineral resources. Here, what happens here is that part of mineral resources for which quantity, grade, quality, density, shape, and physical characteristics are estimated with sufficient confidence to allow the application of modifying factors in sufficient details to support mine planning and evaluation of the economic viability of the deposit. Here comes here to the, the important uh, thing is that here the modifying factor is applied. What are the modifying factors? Because indicated mineral resource is nothing but a higher level of confidence compared to the inferred. Here itself is you can apply all these uh, modifying factors like marketing, uh, social, economic, and any sort of uh, uh, financial parameters, technology, technological parameters, you know. So these are the parameters that you can have, you can put into the resource to develop a, a reserve. You can convert the indicated mineral resource into probable reserve. So so this is the thing. This is showing that this is showing that the economic viability of the deposit. So geological evidence is derived from adequately detailed and reliable exploration, sampling and testing, and is sufficient to assume geological and grade continuity between points of observation. Okay. So next. So this is the major mineral resources, which is uh, of higher level of confidence compared to indicated mineral resources. So a major mineral resources is that part of a mineral resource for which quantity, grade, quality, densities, shape, and physical characteristics are estimated with sufficient confidence to allow the application of modifying factors to support detailed mine planning and final evaluation of the economic viability of the deposit. So geological evidence is derived from detailed and reliable exploration sampling, testing, and is sufficient to confirm geological and grade or quality continuity between points of observation. If we see this chart, the chart explains here, uh, geology starts with uh, the exploration program. So they generally produce exploration results once they finish exploration. So that exploration results leads to mineral resources, starting with the inferred, indicated, and measured. This is how the increase the level of geological knowledge and confidence. So the, here, the point is indicated resources converted to probable reserve and measured resource converted to proof or probable reserves. So reserve is nothing but the economically mineable part of the resource. So here the catch point is economically mineable part of the resource is got reserve. And here for that, there, uh, for converting resource into reserve, you have to apply some modifying factors. All the modifying factors they are highlighted at the marketing, uh, intelligence, economic, uh, so legal, environmental, social, and government regulations. So this, these are all the modifying factors. You have to apply all these factors to resource for the conversion of resource to region. Next, please. So uh, this is a quite interesting part is called resource modeling. So this is resource modeling where we will get to know the resource evaluation as my our topic is mainly the resource evaluation. So uh, there are different many type of mine planning softwares that are being used across mining industries, companies, uh, consultancies, there are a lot of mine like Vulcan, MineSight, Sharpak, 
uh, data mine, mine X for coal, for stratified deposit. So there are a lot of mine planning softwares are available for the uh, for estimating resources, mine planning, designing, scheduling, etc. Et so starting with the resource modeling, we have to start with the preparation of geological database. A geological database is essential for uh, uh, to for the drill hole visualization in the design window. That uh, geological database and then drill hole visualization, then sample data management and processing, then delineation of our body, geological modeling, soil lead modeling, then statistics, geostatistics, then block modeling, estimation, validation, and tonnage quality reporting. And finally, they, you, you can schedule it and finally we can prepare pre design and double design. Here, if you see this image below, if you can see there are different O type of iron ore body with uh, all the boreholes with the pink color. And you can see the blue color, the outlines are the pit. We have developed a open pit and the design here. And you can see all these colors are like iron ore, uh, maybe 45 to uh, plus 45 iron ore, or maybe different ore types, like maybe laminated ore, soft ore, blue dust, etc. Et Next, please. So as I have told you that uh, database structure about uh, geo preparation of geological database, the database structure is nothing but you have to gather some borehole information like uh, polar, uh, survey, assay, and geology. So the cola is nothing but uh, these are the, you have to put the borehole ID, Y, X, Z, these are nothing but the coordinate of the borehole location. You can say that the northing or uh, north or south, east or west, and Z is the MRL. Then the maximum depth of all the boreholes and the whole path, whether the borehole uh, are inclined or vertical and any optional data. That the color file is mandatory. Then there is a survey file. If you have a, a borehole with a vertical borehole or inclined borehole, you have to survey it. You have to find out the azimuth. That is more important. And the inclination and the degree of the inclination. Then comes to the uh, assay file, this, this where it comes, you have to uh, take uh, all the assay parameters. Like for iron ore, you have to take Fe, C, silica, alumina, uh, LOI, phosphorus, sulfur, etc. Et et so for coal, you can take ash, uh, then uh, fixed carbon, etc. Et 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 so there are so many, so many uh, chemical parameters. If it depends on what are the commodities you are working in. So the final is the geology. Geology is also important to uh, mention all the lithology, like what exactly the lithology litho is. Uh, sample by sample, you have to mention all the lithology. Then, uh, next please. <clears throat> so this is, once you will put all the boreholes data, like polar survey, geology and assay, then you can display all the boreholes in the design window. If I, you can see all the 3D boreholes. You can see the 3D boreholes, and this all the boreholes has been plotted in a surpack software. You can here find the summary of a borehole, like how many boreholes are there, uh, how the whole ID, their coordinates, their elevation, and all the borehole depth. So all these parameters you will get into now. So this is the displaying of drill drillholes. This is the first thing that you have to do uh, during resource estimation. Next, please. So once you <clears throat> put all your boreholes, put on your boreholes, you have to uh, uh, interpret geologically, like what are the uh, ore bodies there, what are the lithologies there, uh, how many sections are uh, needed for the preparation of the ore body. So uh, we have to find out uh, like what are the cutoffs, what is the, we have to decide the cutoffs parameters and everything. So based on lithology, we can prepare a lithological model. Uh, based on the assay, chemical analysis data, we can prepare the uh, ore body. So there are two types of ore body that can be prepared. <clears throat> Next, please. 
So this is how once you prepare a cross section, uh, all these cross sections has to be uh, linked. Uh, all the cross section has to be linked uh, through proper tag strings and this uh, solid wire framing can be done. So uh, solid, solid wire framing can be done uh, for to uh, calculate the volume, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is how the over body has um, developed. So this is solid modeling. So this has been done in short time. Next please. So what is a block model? So this is uh, one example I have from a uh, uh, data mine. Like uh, once you prepare all the cross sections and then wire framing and prepare a solid model, then you have to do a uh, uh, data mine block model. So what exactly a data mine block model is like uh, the, uh, the data mine block model, whether it's data mine or supply block model, everything you have to follow the procedures. And the idea here is to fill the vacuum solid model with a, a uh, definite, definitive cell size or parent cell size. You have to uh, give a, a cell size of uh, 25, 25, 10 or 10, 10, 5, whatever. You have to give some cell um, size and accordingly you have to fill the entire solid into blocks. So there are parent cell, there are sub cells. So uh, if you see here, here there are parent cell, all the cells having the origins also. Like uh, if you see X morig, Y morig, Z morig, and uh, there are the X coordinate model origin, Y coordinate model origin, and Z coordinate model origin. Then number of cell in X direction, number of N X, N Y, and Z, number of parent cells along Y, and number of parent cells along Z. So these are the things that we have to consider while preparing a block model. Next, please. So creating a block model in surface also, we can also create a block model. So hey, here also the same thing, once we prepare a cross sections, uh, we, once we digitize uh, the over body, uh, then we have to wire framing it, or we have to create a solid model. Once we prepare a solid model, then we have to choose uh, cell size and accordingly we have to fill the entire solid. Then once we fill the entire solid, we have to add attributes into it. What are the attributes like, let's say for an iron ore, Fe, silica, alumina are the attributes. So similarly, it depends on which commodity you are working in, you have to put some, uh, add some attributes. So once you add attribute, then you have to um, assign some value. And once you assign some value through estimation, so to estimation, there are different types of estimation procedures that are available. Next, please. So block sizes and subsets, this is uh, what I have already uh, discussed. Uh, so there are standard uh, subshell size and there are the variable subshell size. So block sizes in a block model should be related to the spatial relationship of the data gathered and be constrained by the mining rules of the deposit. Subshelling is a way of achieving higher accuracy in your block model without compromising the user defined block sizes. Surpack will divide or combine blocks where necessary to best model your over body. So there are standard cell, cell size, there are variable block sizes. Next please. So creating block model in Surpack, if you see in the left hand side, uh, there is a block model that has been developed in the surface. In the right hand side of the image, if you can clearly see there is a topographic surface and uh, beyond also the block model has been created. But that part has to be excluded because your work body lies below the surface. So uh, accordingly, during the estimation, that part has to be excluded. So this is one example I am showing uh, it uh, as a case study of surface. Is how it looks like the block model and your topography. So again, that all the, this topography has to be surveyed by a, your efficient surveyor. Uh, so you will uh, with a uh, definite, definite, uh, definitive contour interval with a specific contour interval. He will give you all the information to prepare a topographical data. 
Next, please. So these are the meta methods. You have to add attributes like specific gravity or ball density because uh, these are very much essential during uh, uh, classification of tonnes or during uh, calculation of tonnes. Then density is required or specific gravity is required. So you have to add attributes. Uh, any other other parameters also you can add like AP, silica, alumina in iron ore case or a fixed carbon as per set days. Uh, first for set in coal case, if it is a nickel deposit, you have to take a nickel as, a, uh, as an element. So it depends. Next. So all the fill block model attributes, once you fill it, then you have to estimate. So there are different uh, number of procedures that are uh, involved in the estimation process. So there is one is the ordinary rigging. Ordinary rigging uh, is uh, basically a geostatistical estimation procedure for estimating the resources. For that, you need a maximum number of samples and all the boreholes must be close spaced and uh, uh, with a uh, defined grid size. Uh, so ordinary rigging is very much useful. Um, and then indicator pegging, where you will find a number of uh, biomodal uh, data set. Uh, where indicator pegging is used, then the nearest neighbor calculator, and, and the final uh, the inverse distance. Inverse distance is mostly used in uh, industry as it is a bit less complicated and most of the people can understand easily. So inverse distance is also a, a useful tool that uh, it's being used for estimation of the block model. So before that, we have to do a lot of basic statistics and geostatistical study of the borehole data set or the sample data set. How many number of samples are going, uh, you are going to use for estimation and uh, what is the maximum grade, what is the minimum grade, what is the mean grade, what is the standard deviation? What is the variance? So what is the confidence interval? What is the coefficient variation? So these are basically a uh, uh, basic statistical technique where you have to uh, identify each parameters. Uh, so to study all the parameters for better uh, estimation of the resources. So these are the main thing. This is the process. This is how the process uh, flows uh, from the from the exploration campaign or to the resource estimation and this is very much general information and uh, there are all the mine planning softwares that have the ability to uh, do uh, to so that we can carry out such type of exercises in most of the mine planning softwares so so source of the data Next, please. So once you prepare a block model and uh, your uh, resource estimation is done, then you have to report it. Once you have that reported means for iron ore, suppose you want to know uh, your uh, how much quantity is there, what is the quality or grade, uh, what is the ball density, and uh, what are the different ore types available. And at different cutoff, you can also extract how much resources are there and the grade is so there are uh, block model that can be reported through uh, definite tools that uh, tools are uh, attached to the subpack or data mine or any other mine planning softwares uh, you can uh, generate a report of a block model and uh, you can also graph it through uh, classifying all the tonnes and the grades and uh, grades tonnage graph also so this is much very much essential at the end of a uh, resource estimation uh, process. Next, please. So yes, the first part you have covered here. Uh, the first part uh, is basically was the resource evaluation, and comes to the next is in the other it's called pit optimization. So this is very much essential for uh, geologists and the 
mining engineers and whosoever is involved in mining so once you prepare once you establish your resource then you have to optimize it optimize it means like uh, not necessarily whatever the resource you have established uh, you will mine the entire thing no it's not possible so for that you have to carry out optimization exercise for optimization exercise you have to uh, go for a long long parameters there are a lot of parameters that you have to consider for doing during the optimization process. So next please. So what is charging my planning? So uh, in, in, in the estimation, in the optimization part, it will give you like, once you establish the resource, uh, it, will, uh, it will say uh, working out where, when, how, and how much to mine. When to mine, how much to mine, where to mine. So, this is very much essential for a strategic planning, strategic mine planning point of view. Once you establish the resource, you must be sure that, yes, I am going to mine this much of quantity. The grade should be like that. And uh, uh, I'm going to mine in this area only or that area. And I'm going to mine this much quantity. So these are the things that we have to decide. Once your resource has been established, then you have to optimize your resource by by doing this type of exercise. This is an iterative process. This is affected by corporate objectives, decision-making behavior of company. Can reduce risk. This planning for change creates robust peers that give you greater ability to deal with fluctuating markets. Next, please. So here, if we see, once you prepare a over body model, then it, uh, you, uh, the arrow mark is there. You can establish the resources. So once you prepare the resources, you have to do uh, the ultimate pit design, long-term schedule, cut-up schedule. So this, everything, all the schedule belongs to reserves. So here, resources are converted to reserves. So this is the, the, the traditional view, how the resources are being converted to the reserve. Reserve is nothing but, as I have said you earlier, reserve is nothing but an economically mineable part of the resource. So we must keep in mind. Next. So the mining factors, uh, if we see, there are a number of uh, uncertainties. Uh, one is geological uncertainties and economic uncertainties that the mineralization limit, and uh, there's a mineralization grades, then faults, and then joint, jointing, bedding, lithology, hydrology, and topography. So uh, in economic uncertainty, we see there are a number of things also available like interest rate, inflation, power cost, capital cost, commodity prices, contractor cost, labor cost, etc. Et so these are basically uh, factors, mining factors that we have to consider during optimization process. Actually. So the technical parameters, if you see, there is a slope angles, tonnage and grid model, dilution, mining recovery, milling recovery, rug properties, continuity, ball density, mining methods, production rates, etc. Et so these are all the technical parameters. We have to choose everything. We have to choose all. We have to decide what to live the slope angle is by doing some geotechnical study. We have to um, decide on dilution part also. If whether it's internal dilution, whether it's extra land dilution, we have to take everything. We have to decide on the mining recovery. Oh, we cannot mine everything. There will be always be like, we cannot uh, uh, mine 100% recovery. So there, there is a possibility that recovery might reduce to 90, 95% or even lower. So there is a milling recovery also. The milling recovery, once you uh, mine in a particular area, that ore is being stockpiled or that ore is being crushed in a crusher and that is being delivered to a mill or a concentrator plant. So there, uh, there is a milling recovery. So there is also a possibility that we, the recovery will be lower. Next, then rock properties, continuity, ball density. So ball density is important because 
we need to um, give her a sign the ball density for all type of lithology available in the mine mining area that is very much crucial during uh, calculation of tonnages of the waste rock and uh, uh, so for that you need to you have to um, aware of the stripping ratio how much ore how much waste mining is required to get Ore. That means uh, for one ton of ore, how much waste mining you are doing? That is the stripping ratio. There are the mining methods and then production rates. So these are all the technical parameters. Next, please. <clears throat> if you see the economic parameters here, yes, that there is the discount rate, mining cost, processing cost, overhead cost, and commodity price. Discount rate means basically. Uh, uh, an investor, what exactly he does is uh, he has to take some discount rate and he has to compare the interest rate provided by the banks because no one is going to uh, uh, invest in a, um, in a deposit or in, in a mining uh, thing uh, where the return is very less or compared to the bank interest rate. So he, he once uh, uh, he will satisfy that yes, I am going to get, get a maximize interest rate uh, than bank, then I, I, I will be able to invest, invest in any exploration project or any uh, resource uh, project. So there is a mining cost. Mining cost means like how much I want to mine, or to, uh, to get ore, how the, what the cost uh, is uh, incurred. So mining cost is required. Then processing cost also. Because there is the milling, there is a beneficiation plant, there is a smelter, refiner, everything. So all the processing and overhead cost has to be taken into consideration. And the uh, commodity price is essential, very much essential because uh, the for optimization as it, because fluctuation in commodity price will give you erratic uh, uh, profitability. So if you're for, for, for say, for example, the copper price right now stands at 8,000 US dollar per ton. But there is a possibility in the recession, the price has come down to 3,000 or 4,000. So in that case, your all, all, everything, all your mining operation will be here because you will get the lower profitability and, and uh, there is a possibility that the company will uh, suspend their operations. And uh, on the right hand side, what is the pit optimization? In pit optimization is generate pit sales as candidates for scheduling, maximizes cash flow for given inputs. So, whatever the parameters, what are the things that uh, will give, so the, it will be uh, maximize the cash flow. It will be to maximize the cash flow uh, with uh, fixed prices, costs, slopes, and the optimal, optimal, based on that, the optimal line is fixed. So, it will give you like how much waste will be mined and how much ore will be mined. Everything based on the special parameters it will give. Next, please. So what are the things required? So in the in general mine planning software, we have to keep uh, the density. We have to provide a topography and uh, there's a tons and we have to give uh, grade as a metal. What are the different rock types available? Then the cost adjustment factors like or if you're mining, if you have opened a mine and you are initially your cost will be lower because you are mining to the surface, near surface. As you go down, 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 your cost will be increased. So in that case, you have to provide a cost adjustment factors. So uh, for milling also, <clears throat> if you have a different type of ore, or min ore mineral or different type of mineralogy, uh, your cost might differ from different ore types also. So you have to give some adjustment factors. That the pit slope is essential because whether you have based on the geotechnical study, you have to give uh, pit slopes uh, like uh, whether it's a 45 degree pit slope or 50 degree pit slope or 55 degree pit slope. So you, you have to um, assign that also. Then cost, you have to give uh, a mining cost, processing cost, selling cost. So selling your material, you must be uh, knowing about our products, what are the products you are uh, generating. Uh, so all the products has to be 
sold in the market. So you must have to fix the selling price of that material, processing cost and mining cost, all that things. Then on the right hand side, you see the finance, the commodity price, discount rate, corporate objectives. These are very much essential. The mining, the cost, over selection, dilution, and recovery. Then the geotech, geo slope stability. That slope stability is very much essential because you have to do a lot of geotechnical study to understand the rock quality strength, its uh, compressive strength, uh, hardness, etc. Et 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 so that uh, you have to decide on the slope whether you have to uh, put a, a slope of a steeper slope or a very gentle slope. That has to be the same. Then the geology, the, the tons, grades, and rock types. So these are the things that, that are required. Next, please. So if you see here, what are the criteria that are required? Here, if you see, based on all these parameters, like uh, it will generate, it will generate number of pits. Like it will say, uh, it will give you the maximum cash flow. It will, it will give you the, what are the maximum, which pit will give you the maximum cash flow or which pit will uh, give you the highest NPV, net present value of uh, your return or IRR, internal rate of return. So uh, you have, you can generate number of pit, you can generate number of MPV, cost of production, everything, if you see this graph, uh, the maximum NPV of the mine stands here in the middle. So accordingly, you can choose uh, 18 or 19 number pit where uh, the NPV is maximum. The NPV for the selected pit here, there's a crisscross, there's a red and the green, that part also, uh, that, that is also selected. Because here, the object, corporate objectives are to produce Below two to five, five two to five national uh, dollar per ton pound, the capacity of the mine can be increased by sacrificing NPV. Here, the capacity will go up. The cost of production will come down. On the right hand side, you can see the pit cells, different pits. This are uh, these pits are uh, generated through a hotel software. So once you provide all these parameters, as I have said, uh, this will give uh, you a solution related to how much uh, uh, you are uh, able to mine, how much to mine, uh, where to mine. It will give you the maximum return, which pit will give you a maximum return, maximum NPB, maximum IRR, maximum cash flows, etc. Et 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 so, so these are the things uh, are very much essential for a pit optimization process. So yes, Next, please. So yes. So this is all about our uh, topic or uh, mineral resource evaluation and its optimization. So this is very general information. Uh, so uh, let's uh, start with. Uh, if uh, have, uh, you people have any uh, doubt, uh, we can clear it here. And uh, uh, over to Rajwa. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Madhavananda, Madhav, for uh, your materials. And then we will move to the Q&A session. To all of audience who has a question, you may... Uh, Raise your hand. Oh, okay. Maybe uh, you can type it on the chat box or you can uh, unmute yourself. Is there any question from audience? Okay. Maybe for, for me, Maswa. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the attenders maybe uh, still prepare question for Mr. Acharya. Uh, Mr. Acharya, thank you for your explanation. Uh, what your opinion uh, if the parameter, technical, economical environment is all, all, all including 
to preserve um, proven and probable. Okay, but the the management have policy, have policy. Maybe uh, the the or uh, divide into three three category: high uh, high grade. Medium grade and low grade. Uh, the the management uh, have policy uh, for this month or for this quarterly um, uh, focusing in high grade. Uh, in medium and low grade, uh, apa ya? Ditinggal tuh apa istilahnya? Um, uh, uh, apa ya? Not not mining. Not mine it at this time. So at this time, uh, the company will focusing in high grade, but the low grade and uh, low grade and medium grade is still uh, economical, really. It is still economical, um, uh, marketable also. But the policy from management uh, encourage to uh, mining. High grade. So what the define define the low grade and high grade uh, medium grade. If at this time not mining. What yes. your opinion? Um, yeah. So what happens actually? You know, like uh, uh, in any deposit, you will find high grade, medium grade, low grade, whatever. So deposit is a mixture of high grade, low grade, medium grade. So. Uh, when you optimize your resource in the initial phase of the mining, so that uh, you have to opt optimize everything. You must sure that you know, like uh, at the beginning of your uh, uh, operation, like you have to uh, during your that is called a feasibility study. Okay, in the feasibility study, you must be knowing about what exactly your requirement. Okay, so requirement is if your requirement is to mine high grade, then you can mine high grade. And still, your medium grade and low grades are profitable in the market because, for the sustainable point of view, for the you know for the future sustainability, we have to mine low grade also. We have to mine medium grade also, and we can blend all the ores. You know, for to uh, for that, what happens is we have to um, uh, decide on a uh, plant requirement. We have because. There is a specific capex involved in, like uh, you, you know, on all the plants are designed for a specific grade. Okay, or let's say beneficiation plant or concentrator plant, you must be knowing like what is the exact grade that you are going to feed. Okay, so management obviously people will be interested in uh, mining high grade uh, because uh, they will get uh, good money uh, because the high, all the high higher grades have higher prices, but but we cannot uh, leave these uh, medium grades and uh, low grades in the pit and only mine high grade. It's not possible. That is possible. Yes, we can we can mine high grade, but the sustainable point of view, you have to mine all these low grade, medium grade, high grades. And if, if possible, you can blend it also. You can blend it and you can feed to the plant. So this these are the basically the process that we have. To follow. But yes, again. Uh, the decision, the management decision, if they are deciding to mine high grade, then they can mine. A lot of people, they are uh, doing like that only. But a sustainable point of view, then the mineral conservation point of view, uh, you have to uh, understand, I guess, uh, you have to mine the entire thing. You cannot leave uh, something like that. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it enough, Mr. Eric? Yeah, enough. Lah. The, the, uh, yeah, we can explain the management. Lah. If uh, we can uh, focus on the main, uh, what, uh, high grade, yeah, maybe the, uh, the, uh, the main plan is not, not, uh, not so good. Lah. So uh, maybe the stuck lah, the, apa ya, for, the, for the squen. Minus Gwen, very okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks for your explaining, Mr. Rajari. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, here the question from Januardi 
how uh, he want to ask what data must to be input uh, to create the data block model be accurate from geologists. Uh, for a geologist, uh, we have to put boreholes, right? Uh, you, all the geologist must be aware about the core drilling, uh, diamond core drilling, river circulation drilling, rotary air mass drilling. So there are a lot of drilling technologies involved in for extracting samples. Once we prepare, the, once we take the samples as a core or RC sample, whatever, which whatever the sample is. We have to analyze it so in laboratory. Once we get all the results, analytical results from the laboratory, we have to feed all the chemical results as a results into the software by creating an assay file. Once you create, prepare an assay file, or you have to know like what is the highest grade, what is the lowest grade, what is the medium grade, or what is the mean grade, and the, what will be your cutoff. For example, for iron ore, you have to take, consider the ore plus 45 only. Any iron value below 45 will not be acceptable at all because this is not uh, economically viable right, as of now. So you have to take all the iron ore plus 45 Fe only. Means any iron value having 45% Fe must be included in your uh, resource. So once you get all your assay data, you have to uh, visualize in the borehole data in the borehole. Say. So once you visualize, you have to prepare a cross section. You have to start digitizing the area where you are getting plus 45 iron ore. Once you digitize, then you will prepare a solid model by joining all the cross sections. Okay, then after you can prepare a block model, that the solid model is your clone model. That will, it will give you, based on that, you can prepare a block. Then you can estimate the entire area. The iron ore zone is being estimated. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir, for your answer. Here also a question from uh, Mr. Halim in the chat box. Sir, can you re explain about collar SI lipology and geology obtained from the drill hole data? What is the difference? Okay, the collar is basically uh, the borehole coordinates. As we put a borehole, as you might be aware about all the point in the earth having some coordinate. Okay, so the location of the borehole. Collar is nothing but your location of the borehole. Where exactly? Where exactly? you have drilled, okay? So for that, you have to take a uh, northing or uh, southern or north or south, east or west, and RL, that is the reference level, okay? And depth, what is the depth of that bore? So polar file is meant for that. So that is the first mandatory file. Second one is the survey. For survey, it is essential for a geologist to do a survey reading. If it is inclined borehole, boreholes, there is a possibility that the boreholes uh, might get deviated at, as it goes down. So for that, azimuth, uh, azimuthal deviation is observed and you have to take all these uh, azimuthal readings and inclination reading. That is a survey file. Third one is the assay file. Right now, I have explained about the assay file. Assay file means once you drill, you, you, you have to take the samples. Like if it's iron ore, you have to take all the samples, one by one meter, one meter, one meter of all samples generated. The samples we have to send it to the lab. Once you will like, you you send, send all the samples to lab, you will get the assay results. Like what is the Fe value? What is the silica value? What is the alumina value? So this is how you have to create an assay file. And final one, the geology file. The geology file is nothing but it's a type of sample file only, but this is a lithological information. Whether the rock type is hard laminated ore or the rock type is a soft laminated ore, it's a blue dust, what exactly the iron is. Whether it is a shale, 
whether it's a BHQ, whether it's a BMQ, or banded magnetite quagite, banded hematite quagite. So lithological information generally. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any question from audience? Nazwa, boleh tanya? Uh, ya, boleh. Okay, Mr. Archarya, um, I want to ask you something. Yeah, speaking of three types of resource, um, I have I have two questions for you, Mr. Arkarya. Uh, the yeah, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, the first, I uh, how, how anyway how to define or measure this? Uh, this is inferred, this is indicated, and this is um, measure, uh, measure. And, right. uh, and and then the second and the, and then the second question is if I'm not mistaken, um, a uh, resource can be upgraded into reserve. Is it right? Correct, correct, correct. correct. Uh, and and I want to ask you in your perspective, what things can make um re, uh, can make resource turning into reserve? Yes, yes. Resource. Yes. Uh, uh, uh. yes correct. Okay. Uh, thank you. That is okay. the economically mineable part of the resource is called reserve. Okay, so resource that the indicated uh, resource and measured resource. There are three resources. Okay, one is inferred, then indicated, and uh, the final one is the measured. Okay, the measured resource and the indicated resource. Both of the resources have been converted to the reserves, where you can mine, where you can apply the modifying factors. Okay. Uh, Mr. Safian, how? Uh, sorry, uh, I, I, I still, I still don't understand. Um, I mean, the question if, if we have a, if we have a drill hole, so mm -hmm. uh, how to, uh, how to define or measure? Okay, 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 the, yes, yes. The, the, that the means scope, yes, yeah. the scope, uh, the, the scope of inferred, indicated, and measured for the research. Yes, yes. Okay, just yes, just I'm just coming to that. Okay, so see. Uh, in a, in an, any type of exploration campaign, generally, a geologist uh, starts exploring, you know, very wide area. Okay, the wide area means they have to they have to do a lot of greenfield exploration activities. It's a very big area. They initially they have to study or all the geological study. Okay, and gradually the area will eventually it will minimize. Right, uh, they have to focus on a definitive area. Where they have to do a further exploration study. If they have, they, they have uh, got some information, yes, this is uh, might be a potential zone. We have to focus on this area. Okay, so based on some evidence and geological knowledge, geological study, etc., etc. Okay, so the, the the first one is your you know geologist put all the study, all the study you know they do geological mapping, they do all this pitting, they do trenching, they do you know, outcrop sampling, they do any, put some random boreholes, you know, based on that, they will prepare exploration results, okay. So, what happens when the exploration results, so with some evidence, with some increasing confidence, they will further go to inferred resource. In the inferred resource means you will find a very, very wide range of wide gap of boreholes, okay. It's not that all the drill holes are in a very close space. No. So you may find 400 meter, 500 meter, 600 meter wide gap between boreholes. That means here, because of that only, and they will put very limited number of boreholes initially. It's not like that they will put thousands, 4,000 number of boreholes initially. So it's not like that. Initially, they will do lesser drilling. So for lesser drilling, they have lesser confidence for that they will classify the resource as a inferred category. Okay. So once they will, uh, their uh, increase in uh, level of confidence will increase with uh, some sort of uh, confidence. How? Because once they drill, they will get some mineralization zone. That mineralization zone, they will do some mineralogical test work. They will do some metallurgical test work. They will do some analysis. So in this way, their confidence level generally increases. So they will again start to, to uh, drill further, uh, minimize the gap. Initially, they drill in a 600 meter grid or 700 meter grid or 500 meter grid. In the 
uh, next stage they have to minimize the gap now they drill at a grid of uh, let's say uh, 300 meter so the, here the gap is lesser so in this way they drill uh, in the major resource you will find uh, the uh, cross commodities there are uh, some sort of uh, process uh, procedures uh, so is there you have to minimize the gap so if it is iron ore you have to drill 100 by 100 if you, if you are classifying it as a major resource so at, the, at least you have to drill 100 by 100 meter grid okay 100 meter in x direction 100 meter in y direction and you have to put a number of bore holes okay so this is how you have to establish a major resource indicated resource and import resource understood okay. uh, how mr safian uh, is it answer your question okay i get it so so the, the, uh, there is there is some kind of uh, radius is it, is it true uh, some kind of some kind uh, some kind of uh, radius it's like it's like um what we can say uh, uh, 500 and then 5 uh, 750 it's 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 a uh, some kind so of the, so, so, i i i'm just saying very generally actually so there are different for see for a gold i'm I, i'm just uh, citing one example for a gold deposit okay for gold you cannot drill in very wide part because gold veins are very thin and it has to be very specific and you have for that you have to do a very very close space drilling if you are going for a measured resource if you want to put the resource into major category you have to drill at least 15 by 15 or 25 by 25 to establish the mineral resources in gold okay if it depends on what is your commodities like iron ore coal these are all stratified okay coal is stratified they, you can put a wide space drilling it depends it's based, it is totally you know based on the homogeneity based on the continuity of the uh, deposit you have to decide why, what will be your grid pattern so it's not i am just saying just uh, um, some example like you other is 700 600 500 this is not the criteria yeah? but the thing is you have to decide on your the based on the geological deposit you have to understand the deep deposit if it is homogeneous in nature if it is there is no issue about it then you can you know put wide space drilling in iron ore coal limestone etc etc et if when you come to the any critical metal like copper lead zinc nickel gold even uh, gold is very critical okay so it's a very precious metal so where you will find a very thin you know the and you will find a very erratic uh, deposit you know so in this way you have to minimize you have to decide the grid will be you know maybe 25 25 also so in this way uh, this is best totally at the discretion of a geologist they decide what is the best grid pattern for to to establish major mineral resources indicated or import okay understood hello is it answer okay mr okay okay okay. Uh, okay i get it thank you for the answer okay, okay. thank you thank you so is there any uh, question maybe from audience uh, i will pick one more question uh if there's no question from audience maybe this is the question uh, from me mister uh, so is there any uh, geophysical data that needed to be input into the survey to block meddling and pit optimization no no there is no code is there any code this is not required okay so this is very simple like once you prepare all the files in a, any excel format or csv or any text format this files are mandatory that can be imported directly into sapai or data mine whatever so basic files are excel file csv.csv .txt file so these are the files generally required you can import directly all these files into any type of mine planning software and uh, how about the accuracy 
of this data? What percent of the accuracy after we create all of this model? So again, that uh, uh, in geology, uh, 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 things uh, there is a saying that uh, garbage in, garbage out. It means all your uh, model totally depends on your how is your raw data is. Okay, so that totally based on your chemical analysis, you know, all the lithological informations, you know, that chemical analysis is very much essential, and it must be accurate enough to establish your this model that should for that you have to uh, do follow some uh, quality assurance and the quality control program for uh, uh, um, chemical analysis okay so for the chemical analysis is very much essential there should not be any ambiguity in the uh, analysis part okay yes okay mr madam uh, thank you for your uh, answer and maybe this is the end of the q and a sessions Okay. And uh, let me summary of these materials. Uh, so the mineral resources, it can be divided into three. First is inferred, indicated, and uh, measured. And then uh, in the research modeling, there's a lot of different type of mine plane to use. And resource modeling used in uh, for geological database. Database structure, uh, like color, survey, essay, and geology, which is geology is a lithological data. And the essay, there's also chemical parameter we should to see like silica, alumina, and etc. Uh, a block model can be done after put all of the database, like through a hole, and then interpretation and wire frame solid. Uh, and then after that, we can uh, use block size and sub cells to see the uh, topography by adding attributes like gravity, silica, alumina, and etc. After that, uh, you have to estimate by using maybe ordinary tweaking to estimate the resource. And then uh, you put the maximum number of sample and borehole. For estimate, we have to do a lot of uh, geostatistics and basic statistical to have a better uh, estimation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the criteria required have to be general you know, max for max cash, cash flow, which it will give a higher cost, maximum NPP, selected NPP to produce. <clears throat> Once you provide all of the parameters, you can see how much to mine, where to mine, when when to mine, max NPP, max cash flow, and etc. And this is very essential things uh, to do in uh, pit optimization. And uh, that's all for me. Let's move to the photo session. And don't forget uh, to you. To check the link at 10 because it will be closed on 9. So, for all the other audience, please uh, turn on your camera because we will have the photo session. And don't forget to use the background if it's possible. Okay. Please turn on your camera. We will have the photo session. Maybe it will led by Bima Sabatum team, Mr. Aksan, or uh, okay. Uh, who will take the picture? Wait. I will try to set it first. Okay, so I will count one, two, three, and uh, take a picture. One, two, and three, cheese. Okay. Let's have another 
foto. In three, two, one, cheese. Okay, thank you for all of the audience. Thank you for uh, Mr. Madhav for your time. And thank you, also, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for having me for this uh, webinar event. So uh, we are arrived in the yeah, in the end of the session of the, this webinar. Uh, I hope we can meet again in the next event. And that's all from me. Thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Don't forget to oh okay. Jangan lupa untuk mengisi form absensi. Don't forget to check the link absentation because it will be closed on 9. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Acharya. Yeah, thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mr. Okay. Um, I hope you have a college uh, from Nagar, uh, from India, maybe, or from your uh, college in your company. Uh, from the Nagar still my series can uh, sharing session with us. It's Sigma series, maybe on 25 on 26. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a great time. It's a great time. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay.